Hello, um, and welcome to this class. Today we're going to be working into some peak postures of crow, side crow, and fallen angel. So hopefully you've already done a little bit of a warm up. If you want, you can do my basics, my first class, which I just posted before this. So you can do that to warm up your body or just take any stretches you want to before. This class is gonna, we'll do some stretches. And so you can also just take this class separately. Um, but yeah, we're gonna work into our wrists a little bit, work some core work, and then we're gonna just play around with a couple arm balances, kind of the most intro arm balances, so crow. Um, and then you can also work through crow, so you can go crow to crane, or you can go to side crow, and then for those of you who are feeling really comfortable with that, we'll take it into fallen angel. Um, just make sure you're checking in with your body and not trying to force yourself into do anything, and yeah. All right, so we'll start in a tabletop, just warming up into our wrists a little bit. So we'll do some wrist circles. So just shifting your weight forwards and back. It's really important to warm up your wrists before you do any arm balances or hand balances because you can hurt them with your hands. So your fingertips are pointing outside, shift side to side. Bring your palms up, fingertips together, and now we'll do it side to side again. Bring your fingertips towards your knees, shift forwards and back, and you can peel up off your wrists onto your fingertips. Shift forwards, peel up and back. back into neutral we'll bring our hands forwards and then you're going to just take do little finger presses so lifting your heels of your hands up off the mat pressing into your fingers the farther if you sit back on your heels it'll be a little bit easier the more weight you have in top of your hands the harder it will be this is actually really good especially for if you want or if, if you're a climber and you want to have stronger fingers but if you're really working into your handstands, because a lot of your balance in your handstands comes from finger, like your fingers are kind of what keeps you balanced. So doing a few more lifts here. And then coming on to like make knuckles. And then stretch back. So you're pulling and, I don't know, flexing your knuckles a little bit. Coming onto your seated on heels, face kind of this way, or actually no, come into a cross-legged. Bring your palms of your hands together, and we'll do some wrist circles. So you're kind of flowing your hands almost like a flower, but just keeping the base of your wrists together. You'll feel some cracking and popping, which is good. You almost want to keep doing this until you no longer have cracking and popping. Go the other side. That's just a little air bubbles, gas bubbles kind of making their way around. This was just really fun. <laughs> All right, and so we're in our cross-legged position. Inhale, rise up, and we'll do some side stretches. So exhale, bring your right hand to your right side. Your left hand comes overhead, stretching into your left side body. Try and wrap your left shoulder back so your chest stays open. You can be on your fingertips, on your forearm. Whichever. Inhale, straighten. Exhale, left hand to the mat. Stretch your right arm overhead, trying to rotate open that side body, keeping both butt cheeks on the ground. So you're not trying to stretch as far as you can. You're trying to stretch as deep as you can. Inhale to rise. And exhale. We are going to bring your legs straight out in front of you. Now we're gonna twist the spine a little bit more just to warm up. So drawing your right leg in, so your right foot is on the inside of your left thigh, and then place it on the outside of your left thigh. You're going to wrap your left hand, left foot, sorry, back behind you so it's coming towards your right butt. If you wanna make sure that both of your butt cheeks are still on the ground, if they aren't, then keep that left foot straight out in front of you. You're gonna inhale, 
rise your body up towards the sky, and then exhale, bring your right hand behind you, hook your left elbow on the inside or the outside of your right leg, and we'll come into our side stretch here. You wanna make sure the crown of your head is directly above your spine, so you're staying straight here. Your gaze can be over your right shoulder. If you want more, you can bring your left hand between the triangle of your right foot. Your right hand comes behind, coming into a bind here. Or you can stay just in this position. Exhale, release the twist, straighten out your legs. Inhale tall, exhale, take a forward fold here. Your belly is coming in towards your thighs. Your gaze is long. And then you can relax your forehead down a little bit. Inhale back up. And then you're going to draw your left foot in towards your right thigh. Step it onto the outside. And then making sure your both butt cheeks are still on the ground, you're gonna wrap your right foot back around so your right heel is towards your left foot. Inhale tall, exhale, left hand comes behind you, right elbow hooks on the outside of your left knee. And exhale into your twist, your gaze can be over top of your right shoulder. If you want more, you can reach that hand, your right, left, right hand between your left thigh and find your right hand behind you, coming into that twist twist and bind, or you can just stay in your regular twist. We're just trying to warm up the spine because Fallen Angel and Side Curl will both require some spinal twisting. Trying to keep the crown of your head directly above your spine and above your hips. And exhale, release the twist. Bring your legs out in front of you. Inhale tall, exhale to fold. And then inhale up, swing your feet behind you, coming into a tabletop. And then we're just gonna press back into an air downward facing dog. We're going to go through one sun salutation, or just actually a vinyasa, really slowly to really work on your arm strength. So here we are in our downward dog. Your bum is reaching towards the sky, your heel reaching towards the ground, pressing up through your shoulders. As you inhale, you're gonna roll your body forwards, coming in into the top of the plank. And we're just gonna stay here for a few breaths. You're pressing out through your shoulders. Your heels are reaching back. Your belly is drawing in, trying to make yourself as in one line as possible. We're just gonna stay here. And then exhale, we're gonna lower down into our chaturanga. So you're bending your elbows, keeping your elbows drawing in towards the side of your body. And once you hit your chaturanga, we're just going to hover here. So your wrists are below your elbows. You're on the balls of your feet. Trying to reach out through your heels. Staying here. And then come onto the tops of your feet. Inhale as you press your chest up, rolling your shoulders back, pressing into the tops of your feet. We're just going to stay in our upward facing dog. I like to kind of dip my hips from side to side. It just feels good on my lower back. It releases a bit more tension. To do this, you can also be on the balls of your feet, on your toes. As you exhale, now tuck your toes. Press back up into your plank position. We'll stay here for a few breaths. Try to keep your spine straight. And then exhale, press back into your downward facing dog. Now we're going to do a little bit of a drill cycle through fallen angel, I mean fallen triangle and side plank. So to do this, you're going to we'll start on the left so you can see. So you're going to bend your left knee, bringing it towards your nose, pivoting onto the side of your right foot, and then straighten your left leg out in front of you. So it's about one foot length in front of your right foot and lift your right hand towards the sky. Really pressing out through your, arching your spine. 
legs are straight into your fallen triangle. If you want, you can bring your left leg out further. That will kind of work more into your right leg or keep it closer in. That'll work more into your core. Exhale, you're going to bring your right hand back towards the ground. Curl your left knee in towards your nose. Pivot onto the outside of your right foot. And we'll come into side plank. So I like to straighten my legs, but you can also just have your hip feet stacked on top of each other. If that's a little bit too much, you can lower your right knee down to the mat. Or you can also just have your feet staggered, your left foot in front. But try and see how tall you can reach your foot. Exhale, plant your left hand on the mat. Curl your knee in towards your nose. Bring your left hand out in front of you. Lift up your right hand into our fallen triangle. Exhale, bring your right hand to the mat, knee to nose, and then into our side plank. Exhale, back into a regular plank. Press back, so you're kind of like setting up to jump forward like, like you would in downward dog. And exhale, hop to the front of your mat. Inhale to a halfway lift, and exhale, lower your bum, drop your, drop your bum and lift your chest, coming into a chair. Trying to draw your belly in towards your spine. Bring your hands towards your chest, and we will do a chair twist. So you're going to bring your left elbow towards the outside of your right knee, making sure your knees stay in line with each other, one's not shifting out in front. And press your chest forward, twisting here, lower your butt as much as you can, into our chair twist. This is my favorite way to get into the side curl and to get into the fallen angel. Pressing your weight into your right foot, step your left foot back. So we're in a high lunge twist now. Trying to draw your right hip back, left hip forwards. If you want, you can plant your hands on the mat, hooking them at like 90 degrees, and then your right elbow will be on the top of your thigh, on towards your butt. Your left elbow will be on your knee. And just press your weight in a little bit here. Straighten your legs, coming into a flying side splits, or side curl. We'll, we'll get more into that later. It's just a little option if you want a little something. Anyway, here we are in our high lunge twist. Inhale, release the twist. Just regular high lunge. Exhale, plant your hands on the mat. Step your right foot back to meet your left. Shift forward. We'll take a vinyasa, lower down, chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing dog, pulling your shoulders back. And exhale, into our down dog. Just take a minute to walk out the legs a little bit here. We'll do that on the opposite side. So we'll start with our fallen angel, I mean fallen triangle and side plank, but on our right side. So you're gonna draw your right knee in towards your nose and then step your right foot out in front of your left. Lift up your left hand, fallen triangle on your right side. Your gaze can be up towards the sky. Remember you can have your right foot out as far as you want it. The further you go, the more it'll work into your leg or the triangle. Exhale, bring your left hand towards the mat. Draw your right knee in towards your nose. Pivot onto the side of your left foot and open up into a side plank on your left side. Stretching your foot towards the sky, kind of rainbowing your spine. Exhale, bring your right hand to the mat. Draw your knee in towards your nose. Come onto the side of your right foot. Or, yeah, fawn, fawn triangle on your right side. 
I'm very bad with my right and left sword. So that, pressing out through your spine, reaching your left hand tall. Exhale, bring your left hand towards the mat, peel your knee in towards your nose, pivot, and side plank on your left side. See how tall you can reach your right foot, or having it stack is also perfectly fine. Exhale into a plank, bending your knees, press your butt back, look forward, exhale, step or hop to the top of the mat. Inhale, halfway lift, exhale, fold, and inhale as you drop your belly, I mean drop your bum, lift your chest, coming into our chair pose. See if you can lower your butt just a little bit farther this time, still trying to draw your belly in. Bring your hands to your heart center, and then bring your right elbow to the outside of your left knee. Gaze up over top of your left shoulder towards the sky, keeping your knees in line with each other, keeping your hips low. And exhale, step your right foot back, coming into a twisted high lunge. If you want, again, you can try that flying split. So you're hooking your elbows, they're bent at 90 degrees, your right elbows at the hook of your left knee, and your left elbow is at your butt. Bring your hands onto the mat, and then lower your weight into your hands, kicking your feet out, coming into that flying split. Or just stay here at your high lunge twist. Exhale, release the twist, coming into a high lunge. Sink your hips a little lower. Exhale, plant your hands at the top of the mat. Step your right foot back, coming to the top of a plank. Shift forward, take your vinyasa. So, chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing dog. And then exhale to down dog. From here, we're going to do some knee to nose lifts. So, it'll kind of work our core. So, inhale our right leg towards the sky. Pointing your toes. And exhale, draw your knee in towards your nose. Curl here, press out through your shoulders, hold your knee as high as you can. And exhale, kick it back. Inhale, we're gonna draw our knee in towards our right elbow or right armpit. Hold it here. Keep holding it. And exhale, kick it back. Inhale, draw it in towards your left elbow. Take one more breath. And exhale, kick it back. We'll do one more. So inhale, draw it in towards the top of your right armpit. Lower it down all the way to your right wrist. Lift it up. Bring it over to your left armpit. Lower it down onto your left wrist. Bring it up. Bring it back to center. And kick it back into your three-legged dog. That's a very good core work. So you can do that a couple more times if you want. Exhale, release your right foot down. And inhale, your left foot towards the sky into your three-legged dog. Inhale, draw your knee in towards your chest, pressing out through your shoulders. And exhale, kick it back, three-legged dog. Inhale, draw it in towards your left shoulder left armpit, hold it here, pressing up through your shoulders, and exhale, kick it back, inhale, draw it in towards your right armpit, one more breath, and exhale, kick it back, inhale, draw it in towards your left armpit, Lower it down all the way to your left wrist. Lift it up. Over to your right armpit. Lower it down to your right wrist. Lift it up. Knee to nose. And exhale. Kick it back. And release into your downward dog. Loosen inchworms. So 
You're going to walk your hands slowly back to meet your heels. So you're coming for a forward fold. And then walk forwards into a plank. Now we're going to walk our feet towards meet our hands. Coming up on our tippy toes, we're really trying to press into our hands and our core. And then exhale slowly. Walk it back to the top of the plank. Now we're going to walk our hands back to meet our heels. Really trying to engage your core as much as you can to do these walks. And exhale. Walk forward, pressing weight into your hands, keeping your belly button drawing towards the back of your spine. Up the plank, and then exhale as you slowly press walk towards the front of your mat. And exhale, press walk back. Now we're gonna walk our hands back towards our feet. And we'll just hang here for a second. And then we're gonna do little hop presses. So you're gonna press into your hands, lift up your toes, and then kind of you're stacking your shoulders over top of your fingertips and seeing how little weight you can get in your toes as you walk them forward. And then release. Bring your hands so they're about one hand length in front of your feet. Come up onto tippy toes, and maybe even try and bring your toes to your wrists and then lower them down, release. Bring your hands in front, lift your toes up, toes to your wrists, and then release. Just keep doing that in front of the mat. You also don't need to bring them to your wrists, you can also just press walk. So try and get a little cover, and then step. And then here we are at the top of our mat. Bend your knees, press into your hands, and hop your feet back to the top of the plank. And then we're gonna walk our hands back to meet our feet. And we'll just press walk to the front slowly some more. Pressing into your hands, lifting up off your toes, and hopping forwards, just seeing how much float you can get. If you don't get any, that is also perfectly fine. We're trying to press out through your shoulders. All right. Now here we're at the top of our mat, and we're going to go into crow. So there's a few ways that you can go into crow. You can do it like so, with your knees kind of straight in front of you, straight hooked onto your elbows, or you can have your knees kind of splayed out a bit more to the side. This is probably easier if it's, you're just starting because it gives you more surface area to hook with. So maybe we'll start like that. So you want to, almost going into Malasana, so you're yogi squat. So your feet are bent out at about 45 degree angle. And then you're going to hook the back of your arms on the, kind of like the crack that your calf and your thigh make on your knees. And then you're gonna plant your hands in front of you, about shoulder width apart. And then just lift up on your toes and kind of lift your butt up a little bit more. And then just kind of play with your weight here. So you're going to lift, press your forehead forward and just see if you can lift one foot off the mat and then the other. Come back, down, lift up, shift forward, with one leg off the mat, and then the other. See if you can get them both. If you want to try, I personally actually like this next method a bit more. It's easier for me. So if you want to try just keeping your feet straight, hip width in front of you, and then bend your knees and hook them on top of your elbows. So they're just kind of straight in one line rather than your elbows coming to the insides of your legs. Your knees are almost coming into your armpits then your hands, make sure you're spreading your fingers wide and they're shoulder width apart. Lift up onto your toes and then press your weight forwards. See if you can hover your toes off the mat. My arms are really sweaty, so it's hard to grip. Um, 
But if you're not in a really hot place, that's <laughs> perfect. Um, but yeah, just kind of play around here. If you want, if you're scared, you can put some blocks down, like stack them there. So you can just have that so if you fall forwards, your head will just kind of sit onto the blocks. Or you can just play with one foot at a time. So play around there. I really wish I had a towel to wipe my hands. Um, from that, if that's if you're getting crow, it's pretty easy. The next one that you can do is crane. So with crow, we have our arms bent at 90 degrees. With crane, you have your hands straight. So you set up exactly like crow. You're going to need to have the straight alignment um, for crane. Like so, the second version of crow that I showed. Bring your knees to your armpits. Shift your weight forward, and then lift your bum up, heels up, and straighten out through your hands, through your arms. So you can play around with those. Um, and then we'll do, now we'll get into side crow. So come up into a forward fold, or a, sorry, uh, yeah, forward fold, and then inhale them a halfway lift, and then exhale, lower your butt, inhale, lift your chest up, coming into a chair, walk your feet together so your knees are pressed in towards each other. Bring your hands towards your chest. And then we're gonna set up for side crow. So you're gonna bring your left elbow to the hook of your right knee, like we were in that chair twist earlier. But then you're gonna lower your butt down. And pretty much exactly how I set you guys up earlier, you're gonna put your right elbow kind of on the meat of your butt and your left elbow on that crack between your um, right calf. And then you're just gonna play with your weight here. You can keep your feet off the mat, on the mat at first and just lower your forehead towards the ground. And then see if you can lift your feet up coming into that side curl. You wanna keep your feet or your knees stacked on top of each other. If you want, you can drop your forehead down and then kick your feet back. Kind of play like this, just getting really comfortable. Knowing that the more awareness you have, the less fear you're gonna have for falling over. So a big, a, I fall over a lot and it's really important to be able to kind of tell when you're about to fall over and recover from that position. So if you feel yourself really wobbly, you know you're gonna fall over, just come back and reset. Um, so from there, we're in side crow, and this is where you can kind of kick your legs out like we did earlier. So you're going to your flying splits here, or you can keep them together. And then the last kind of variation I want to show is fallen angel. So we'll do fallen angel on this side. You can just be playing around with whichever pose you want, and then we'll do this all on the other side. So you're in your side crow, and then you want to dip your ear that's closer to the mat forwards to the mat, so your forehead comes onto the mat, and then just lift your top leg up, pointing it towards the sky, and then see if you can drop your cheek more towards the mat, lift, like pulling up through your left foot, or sorry, your high foot, and then if you want to lift your hips off of your elbow. So we're starting our side curl like this. Drop your head down, and then you want to kind of press your body out. So you're only, your legs are only resting on that one arm, if that makes sense. So I'll, we'll go through that one more time. Make sure, this is a lot of heavy on the wrist, so maybe just swing your wrists out a little bit give them some wrist circles. If it's too much, pause the video, come back to it. So here we are on our side crow. So you wanna have your feet set. Sorry, I just dropped too far. Um, then you lower your forehead down, your cheek down. Lift your one top leg up. And then you're kind of pressing your hips back and up as you lift them up off of your other arm and you have a lot of weight on that connection 
between your left shoulder. I can't really describe. I hope you can see what I'm doing. Um, and then if you want, you can even lift your forehead up off the mat and go there. So that was a lot. Maybe we'll just take one child pose just to reset. Maybe bring your forearm, your arms back behind you. Relax here. Come up onto seated on heels. Bring your hands in front of you with the tops of your hands down. And just kind of stretch into the back of the wrists here. You really don't want to overdo the pressure that you're putting on your wrist because yours are so important. Maybe you can bring your fingers in, kind of like making like little fists, stretching the back of your wrists. Inhale tall, exhale, bring your left hand overhead, just getting into a side stretch here, bringing your right hand to the mat. Inhale up, exhale left hand to the mat, right hand overhead, side stretch here. All right, and then we will try the side crow and fallen angel on our left side. Um, if you want to just continue playing with crow, you can do that as well. There's also one more fun thing from crow that I'll show at the end of this. Um, so coming into side crow, let's just walk to the top of the mat. Inhale, reach tall, and exhale, come into our chair pose. Hands at our chest, our knees are together. And then we're gonna bring our right elbow onto the outside of our left leg, coming into our chair twist. And then lower your butt down towards your heels. Bring your um, elbows to, onto your legs, setting up for that shelf. Keeping your knees together, lower your hands onto the mat so they're shoulder width apart, your fingers are wide. And then reach your forehead towards the mat, and slowly lift off of your feet, coming into that side crow. So you can go for the split here, so reaching your top leg behind you, your bottom leg that you're putting your putting on your arms, reaching it forwards, stay in your side crow, or we can come into our fallen angel. So to do that, again, you're going to be in your side crow, and then this time you're gonna lower your left cheek and your left forehead towards the mat. Reach your top leg towards the sky. And then shift your hips back and up, coming off of your right arm, lifting them towards the sky into your fallen angel. Really trying to point your toes. And if you want, you can lift up your chest. My arms are pretty sore. Um, but you can lift up a few chest so you're no longer on your forehead. I mean, your side cheek, you're kind of like in a floating fallen angel. My wrists are really starting to hurt, so just make sure you're doing your little wrist things. You can play around with that a little bit more. We'll do one more together. So I'll make it here, maybe that's easier to see. So you can also, you don't need to start from the chair pose. You can also just start here, kind of at a toe stand, hooking your elbows onto the mat or onto your leg, lower your forehead down, and then lift your top leg up, shift your hips, and then come up into your fallen angel. If you want, you can lift up your head. Okay, I'm done. You guys can play around as long as you want. I'll just show you the last thing that you can do or that I like to do from crow, especially if you're adding crow into your flows and you're kind of creating your own sequences. This is a really fun thing to do because it's just a way to get yourself back into your plank. So if you're in your crow and that, or crane, either one, we're here and all it is is shooting your feet back and coming into your chaturanga. So you shoot your feet back and then your elbows come in towards your chest and your chaturanga upward dog. Come back into your downward dog. 
So we can try that one more time until the bending knees move forward. Exhale, step or hop to the top. Straighten your legs. Hook your knees on the inside of your armpits, the backs of your biceps. Shift your weight forward, coming up off of your toes into your crow. See if you can straighten your arms, drawing your heels towards your butt. And exhale, pick your legs back out behind you as you lower your chest, coming into your chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing dog. And exhale, down dog. Lower down on your knees. Back to seated on heels. That's the end of this little how to do <laughs> crow, side crow, and fallen angel. I hope you enjoyed. I hope it was educational because it wasn't really much of a flow, but it was some of the prep poses and different techniques into the arm balance. So make sure you give your wrists some love. Mine are really feeling it, so just take some wrist cycles. And yeah, if, if at any point your wrists are starting to hurt, don't overdo it. I think I might have just done over, overdone it, so don't learn from me. Um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed. Take any other final postures you need, and I hope to see you in my next arm balance class. I think we'll go into pinch up. So, for